Well, I'm up to about seven rows now. I'm going to turn it around and start my eighth row. And while I'm crocheting this, you've already seen it on some of the other clips perhaps, I want to talk about different devices for walking dogs. Now in my opinion, a regular clip-on collar, every dog should have one of those, but for me, I think those are just mainly for holding ID. I don't really like walking dogs on a collar. Because mainly you want their collar to be loose and comfortable because they're wearing it all the time to hold their ID. And if it's loose and comfortable, then it can easily pop out of their collar. If you're perhaps jogging with your dog and your dog stops suddenly, the collar could slip right over his or her head. If you got a dog that stops suddenly when you're not noticing them, they could still slip out. Or some dogs, they eventually figure out how to slip out their collar. They'll take a step back, twist their head, push it down, and just plop right out of the collar, even if it's fairly tight. And the only way to make that collar tight enough so that the dog can't get out is to make it so tight that it's not comfortable. So usually I just leave a collar on my dog all the time, nice and loose, and it has their ID tag with my phone number, it has their rabies tag, and it has their microchip tag. Now some people believe that leaving a collar on 24-7 is dangerous because a collar can get caught in something. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that belief, and I certainly don't disagree with people that believe that. But my concern is that if your dog gets out on you, they slip out the front door or something, now they're out with no type of identification and no way for them to get back home because a lot of people won't pick up a dog and have it scanned even if you do have a microchip, even though you should have a microchip for your dog. So like I said, I never walk my dogs by the collar. Now the next leash is what I'm making here. It's called a slip leash. The great thing about a slip leash is when the dog is walking nicely, the loose, the, the, I'm sorry, the leash is loose around her neck. If the dog starts to pull, the slip leash tightens up. The bad thing about a slip leash though is if the dog continues to pull, if your dog that hasn't had any leash training or something, the tighter they pull or the harder they pull, the tighter the slip leash is going to get. That's why slip leashes are dangerous. Even though I'd leave a collar on my dog 24-7, I'd never leave my dog unattended with a slip leash on. Because just like a dog can get hung up in a collar, if they get hung up on a slip leash, then they could choke themselves. Especially with dogs, when they feel that choking sensation, they're just going to pull harder and choke themselves more. So you never ever want to leave a dog unattended on a slip leash. Now the best of both worlds, between a slip leash and a collar is actually a martingale. A martingale will tighten like a slip leash, but it stays loose like a collar or stays loose like a slip leash when a dog is walking properly. But the great thing about a martingale, it has a stopping mechanism. So you adjust the martingale correctly and it won't choke your dog. It'll just tighten up tight enough so they can't get out. Of course, the only disadvantage to a martingale is that they're quite expensive. And if you're working or volunteering in a shelter environment, martingales can take quite a bit of time if you're constantly moving dogs, maybe from their kennel to the playpen or from their kennel to the hospital or taking them to a pet park to walk around. Sometimes it's easier to throw on a slip leash and go, especially if the dog doesn't pull that hard. Another concern with a martingale, if you're working with a dog who's afraid of being leashed, then the martingale can cause problems just like trying to get a collar on because you're going to have to slip this thing over their head, number one, and then it normally it takes two hands to adjust it and a dog that's very nervous about you putting your hands around their face, they're probably not going to want you adjusting that martingale. So a slip leash is good to slip on and off a dog who's might be a little nervous or even a little aggressive. Now another alternative, a lot of trainers don't care for these, or, or is a harness. Some people like harnesses because the dogs definitely don't choke themselves. But I have seen dogs slip out of harnesses. So personally if I use a harness, I also use a martingale or a slip lead as a backup. I use a harness for comfort and the martingale or the slip leash for safety. So, uh, a lot of trainers will tell you that a dog will pull harder on a harness. 
and that does seem intuitive, especially when you see huskies you know, pulling a sled, you see some of those American bulldogs and those weight pulling competitions. So it definitely can be a concern, but I've actually seen some dogs actually walk better with a harness. I guess it's because they feel that strange sensation on their chest and they slow down. Uh, one shelter manager told me that kind of depends on the dog. Some of the barrel chested dogs might tend to pull harder where some other dogs might not. And there's lots of other contraptions out there too and we'll talk about those in a later segment like the prong collar and the choke chain. Um, once again those are things whether you think they're okay or not it's extremely important never ever to leave your dog alone unattended with a choke chain and especially a prong collar.